Okay, so, um, hello everyone. My name is Leki Ando. I'm from Osaka University. So today, uh, my presentation titled The Anti-Marxist Moment in the 1980s, uh, Japanese Left. Um, I'm going to talk about the decline of Marxism in Japan, uh, one aspect of it. Um, I, I've, wrote, I've written a bit too much, so uh, I'm going to skip some of the parts, some of my manuscript, especially the marked parts, uh, like these parts. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to read it up, so uh, I'm going to start. So, criticism of Marxism in the history of post-war leftist thought has a long history. It was not only made by conservative or reactionary forces or liberal forces, but also from within Marxism. Around the end of the 1970s, a leftist tendency emerged that was explicitly anti-Marxist. Uh, what I would like to focus on here is not the external criticism of Marxism, but rather the fact that uh, Marxist intellectuals, such as those who belong to some party or were involved in social movement, began to take a critical view of themselves. So anti-Marxist criticism was a kind of um, self-criticism for them. So in this paper, uh, I would like to pay particular attention to uh, Tor Toda, and I'm going to explain who he is. Uh, Toru Toda was an activist in the Communist Workers' Party, especially in its radical faction, the Red Front faction, and a supporter of third worldism in the mid 1970s. In the words of Hidemi Suga, uh, he was a symbolic personality who linked the 68th student revolt with uh, third worldism. According to his own words, Toda found hope for preserving Marxism in the New Left movement and later in the Marxist revolutionary movement in the third world. But in response to the problem of violence that arose, uh, he became aware that revolution and Marxism were incompatible. Thus, to break the link between Marxism and revolution, he tried to truly uh, criticize Marxism which still held a unique kind of power in the revolutionary and social movement of his time. He shaped his criticism of Marxism to the extent of saying, uh, Marxism has nothing essentially to do with a uh, revolutionary no emancipation, or rather, it is opposed to it at the deepest level. Thus, um, toward the insistence on Marxism, uh, was not merely to point out or problem problematize the flaw flaws in Marx or Marxism, but to declare that Marxist ideology itself, uh, which dooms the revolutionary thought of the 20th century, fundamentally invalid. Then, how did this radical criticism came about? Come about. In 1983, Toda published a book titled Marx's Funeral, uh, Marx is also in Japanese. Uh, what is noteworthy is that Toda embraced uh, French thought as anti-Marxism or a criticism of Marxism um, in, that, in the book. So focusing on four of his contemporaries who uh, became major reference in his debate, uh, Alexandre Solzhenitsyn, Andre Guxman, uh, Michel Foucault and Jean Baudrillard, I will examine how Toda incorporates uh, their arguments. By examining Toda's argument, this paper, or my, my paper, my talk, aims to clarify one aspect of the term that occurred within the leftist debate around 1980s. How did the skepticism towards Marxism among left intellectuals arise? And what influence did French intellectuals have on this process? Uh, that's my like question or theme. So in France, criticism of Marxism intensified, especially in the mid 1970s. The term anti-Marxism thought itself was probably taken from the new philosophers uh, like Glucksmann. Solzhenitsyn's *The Gulag Archipelago* was published in France in 1973 and had social repercussion, uh, referred to as the Solzhenitsyn moment. One of the repercussions was the signboard of the new philosophers, staged by uh, Bernard Henri Lévy uh, through television and the publishing media. If there was a family resemblance between them, it was in their criticism of Marxism, even though they generally had nothing in common uh, among them. 
Many of the key figures in the new philosophers were Maoist activists and their critic of Marxism in the in the wake of or after the wake of the Gulag Archipelago is sometimes said to have something in common with the proponent of Marxist funeral, like like the position of Toda. Um, uh, in this part, uh, I briefly explain the affair of the translation. So when uh, these French philosophers work translated in Japanese, but uh, I'm gonna skip it. But basically in 1970s, their works were translated. Each of these is a product of the modern revolution, that is the industrial revolution, the bourgeois revolution, the bourgeois political revolution, and the idealist revolution, uh, so like German idealism, uh, stating that modern Marxism was able to unite these three elements. So Marxism is a, a kind of um, result of these three revolutionary change uh, in modern time, according to Toda. And I explain what, what the meaning of it in the part, but uh, sorry, I, I'm gonna skip it. Um, so Toda states that the fact that Marxist critic of capitalism was only a critic of capitalism um, the English translation is a bit strange, but the fact that Marxist critic of capitalism was only a critic of capitalism is a ground for the fact that Marxism has to had to turn to the opposite of a revolution and emancipation. Uh, therefore, Marxist modern socialism was only socialism as a negation of capitalism within the framework framework of modernity, or the negation of capitalism from the standpoint point of modernity. And in this sense, it was the most coherent and complete form of modernity. I mean, like the um, Toda, according to Toda, Marxism it presupposes the modern uh, conception. So according to Toda, uh, Marxism doesn't go out from the problematic, modern problematic itself. Um, so then Toda, I'm going to go into the total leading of French thought. Uh, thus far, we have reviewed the main point of Toda's critic of Marxism. How then uh, French thinker led in Toda's discussion? Uh, the deci decisive factor was the existence of forced labor camp in the Soviet Union. Toda claims that his reading of Soviet, uh, Solzhenitsyn's Grag, the Grag Archipelago was a cataclysm that shared him towards a full scale critic of Marxism. For him, the problem lies in the history of the genesis of Gulag Archipelago, as described by Solzhenitsyn, or the search for conditions that uh, would create a camp. Why the concent not concentric camp, but labor camp were created. The, this question of the Gulag is taken up in the wake of Solzhenitsyn's discussion of revolutionary justice. Uh, that is, the tautological notion that revolutionary justice is revolutionary and just because it is the justice of the revolution. A belief made possible by the proletarian state, uh, proletarian dictatorship, and the certainty of science. Uh, Solzhenitsyn discusses this dialectic of revolutionary justice or the history of it, its conceptual develop, development as the legalization of, law, of lawlessness from Lenin's defense of the revolution to the crime of counter-revolution in the Soviet penal code. Uh, Toda states that such counter-revolutionary crime blocks the revolution against the Soviet Union and that there is thus a perversion of the idea of revolution as crime. So revolution against capitalist state is okay, but revolution against socialist state is crime in Soviet, uh, in socialist country. So that's the perversion. However, the argument goes on to say that the Gulag is not only a necessity for, or for the defense of the revolution and its insistence, but also a miss of labor and production. In other words, the Gulag system already had its economic necessity and theoretical justification in Marx's own valuation of labor and production, uh, according to Toda. Toda argues that the Marxist states combine labor value theory and proletarian dictatorship in ideological scientific discourse 
and in the discourse of the state, which he called this labor value state. Toda historically described this labor value state as the great confinement of Michel Foucault's history of madness, uh, the confinement or exclusion of the poor and mad. Uh, drawing on the discussion of modern established epistemes, Toda argues that the prison society of modern civil society, with its surveillance and punishment in prison, factory, school, hospital, and barracks, is equivalent to the imprisonment society in uh, Soviet society, in which labor and cultivation of order are enforced by the state and its ideology. Uh, Todd's reception of Foucault allowed him to take a critical view of modernity itself and to see Marxism as a part of modern episteme, uh, within the modern episteme. He seems to have obtained a view of Soviet society based on the Gulag as uh, within the episteme of Western modernity, as analyzed by Foucault. However, the influence of Solzhenitsyn's the Gulag Archipelago on Toda is not limited to the reason for the creation of the camp. It is also about resistance to it, resistance to the camp, uh, non-Marxist resistors uh, inside the camp. Toda highly evaluated Glucksmann's critique of Marxism, tracing its origin to his reading of Solzhenitsyn's Gulag Archipelago. Uh, Toda says that while uh, Bernard and Levy uh, only invited Marxism as the opium for the people, Glucksmann emphasized the resistance of non-Marxists inside the camp and reflected on his own complicity as Marxists who did not criticize the camp. Toda showed a strong commitment to the figure of resistors as he tried to find the way of revolutionary subject who resist the so-called revolutionary state of the Soviet Union. Toda traces reason why the project of, of emancipation turned into opposite opposition back to the roots of Marxism, which is a stance especially taken by, for example, Glucksmann. In the Masters of Thought, Glucksmann traces the dialectic as a logic of terror and totalitarian logic. Toda evaluates the critique of statism as a form of revolution connected to German idealism in a similar way if not the same way as Glucksmann. However, in response to Glucksmann's position of perpetual resistance and his break with the revolution, so Glucksmann gave up the notion of revolution uh, in some way, in, in some point, at some point. Toda agrees with a break uh, with a revolution that aims for good power and state, uh, but asserting, but uh, that is not the same as abandoning the vision of revolution that does not become power or state state power, uh, or that continue to go against them. In this way, Toda argued that the guerrilla-like um, permanent revolution, uh, which continue to reject good governance, is uh, as the contemporary task of thought. Therefore, what kind of revolution is being considered here? Let us focus on Toda's reference to Baudrillard. Um, <clears throat> Uh, according to Toda, Baudrillard has an um, aversion to the concept of production, emphasizing the battalion concept of consumption as waste. According to Toda, Marxism is industrialism, and it, it fails to grasp the symbolic dimension of mass consumer society, or consumption, the concept of consumption, and place its fundamentals on production labor and make it to the state. We have seen uh, previously that this gives rise to a state that is constituted on the basis of value of labor. In contrast, Toda presents a view that superimposes the concept of consumption and mass uprising. He sees mass uprising as political consumption under modern condition. It is not a revolution with the working class at its center, but uh, miscellaneous uh, multiple mass uprisings that are being critiqued. While Toda evaluated Baudrillard's consumption in its symbolic dimension, he treated it not only as an internal mechanism of capitalist society, but also as penetrating history, so something universal in history. He also thinks highly of the emergence of mass rebellion rather than revolutionary past towards the socialism. What Toda evaluate is 
uh, what Todai Barrett is no longer Marxism as a criticism uh, of capitalism, but the existence of non-Marxist, non-worker-centered masses. In this regard, I must highlight uh, one thing about Foucault's assessment of the Iranian revolution. As is well known, the Iranian revolution occurred in 1978 and was a revolution that brought about the crops of the uh, pa Paravi dynasty in Iran and made Iran the leading for uh, sorry Islam the leading force with uh, Khomeini as its leader. Foucault evaluates the Iranian revolution in an interview and published several articles discussing the political spirituality that uh, works there. Foucault's spirituality is translated here. Uh, by Toda, or like his, uh, the translation that he led as only mind, Yuishin. And what Toda evaluate is religiosity or political spirituality in the Solzhenitsyn sense. Toda states the question of the primordiality and transcendence of human existence, which cannot help but produce the religious, is ultimately the same as our question of emancipation. Toda believes that the question of human spirituality, which lies at the root of religion, is the same as the question of emancipation, that he proposes an esoteric approach to the revolution. According to Toda, there was a religious world of revolution that was lived in the popular uh, dimension. Uh, this primordial revolutionism and utopianism of the people formed the basis of the revolution. And only by leaving the modern class movement based on trade union and the party can worker become the bearer of the revolution for Toda. The influence of Baudrillard, which I discussed earlier, is also related to the spirituality that Toda evaluate here. Uh, like there is a symbolic dimension, like according to like um, his leading, Toda's leading of Baudrillard, there is a symbolic dimension different from necessity and usefulness in modern society, where commodification and symbolization have advanced. The desire for the symbolic cannot be erased regardless of how far we go. Toda believes that there is an um, ontological dimension to human desire that can be freed from materialization or symbolization and inst in institutionalization through revolution as a practical act or through such a waste and communication. For Toda, political spirituality is not to sub sublim sublimate the popular uprising into a state religion of Marxist-Leninism, but continue to seek the possibility of revolution in a kind of caste on revolution. That is to truly cast the incorporation of the collective spirituality that appear in the uprising into the revolution or into the state. Uh, sorry, so like my conclusion, uh, we discussed Toda's argument above uh, the failure of the Marxist project of emancipation and the realization that it was turning into the rather harsh oppression uh, led Toda to anti-Marxist thought. In this context, he incorporated the idea of contemporary French intellectuals such as Solzhenitsyn, Glucksmann, Foucault, Baudrillard into his own anti-Marxist project. It is necessary to judge the extent to which Toda led or reads his uh, argument accurately, it's a, a bit problematic, but in, in particular his reading of Glucksmann, Foucault, Baudrillard is highly questionable in some way. However, uh, accurate readings are not that important, but rather the fact that Toda found in the thinker of his time the same sense of conflict as he, and he has himself and adapted uh, them under the label of anti-Marxism. In France, there is a, what is known as anti-totalitarian moment, especially after Solzhenitsyn moment, um, the Grac Archipelago, uh, an ideological trend emerged whose paradigm is the analysis and criticism of totalitarianism, becoming uh, decisive and influential across the extreme left, uh, left liberalism, republican, and conservatism. What then uh, was the, the situation in Japan? Was there a similar paradigm? In fact, for the leftists, the killing of comrades by the United Red, Red Army and inner violence may have had a similar effect, but it does not appear to be a paradigm that cuts across various political forces. As Toda and Kassai themselves recalled, 
the argument did not leave broad social impact. Uh, Kiyoshi Kasai uh, would later, like the same uh, side with Toda, uh, would later say that framing of the debate uh, as critical Marxism or anti Marxism ultimately lost its necessity with the end of the Cold War. Toda died in 1984. Uh, the era was moving towards the bubble economy, and Toda's critical Marxism may not have been generally regarded as necessary at the time. Kiyoshi Kasai and Shuhei Kosaka, together with uh, Seiji Ta Takeda uh, and others, published the magazine Organ. In Organ, uh, they tried to maintain a certain level of politics by presenting the argument while maintaining the sense of distance from Japanese postmodernism. But anyway, this ended in 1991 and the problem of Marxism criticism itself dissolved uh, in this situation. Sorry, um, this, is, um, this is all. Thank you for listening. OK, we have time for questions. Um, do, do you know how to maybe show the Zoom again? And then from the live audience, if there's some questions, we can take that. Anyone on Zoom, just um, raise your digital hand, so to speak, um, or here in the Raj. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Um, like um, the discussion, um, somewhat anti-Marxism, came from um, I don't know how to explain this, but independent leftists, so not sectarian, uh, but not simply non-sectarian um, left. This comes from like in between, so we sometimes call it dokrit uh, saha. So it's not sect. It's not like non-political left, it's between. Uh, so mainly the people who discuss this kind of problematic, like some kind of anti-Marxist uh, discussion is from um, this kind of left, so a bit between. Then um, the Toda was also in the, probably in that side, like before he was a party member, but that party itself was a bit like, strange position. It's not the like normal party. Um, so and if I uh, answer to your question, uh, I want to compare to French situation. So in France, probably people are more like um, they, they have the consciousness of uh, anti-fascism, for example, because in Europe, they are proud of uh, the victory against um, like fascist, Nazist, Nazism, and so on. So in 1970s, probably the people uh, combated, like they had already some kind of anti-totalitarian um, or anti-fascist uh, tendencies. But they, uh, in France probably, they combated it, to, it, this kind of argument against communists or against uh, Soviet Union, or against this kind of stuff. But in Japan, probably, we didn't have such a kind of strong um, problematic against, for example, totalitarianism, or maybe against fascism, maybe, in some way. But it's it basically about militarism in Japan. So it's a bit different. So um, in 1980s, um, this kind of strong critique was no longer necessary for most of the people or like they just say something like 
we can just modify Marxism in some way. Marxism is not that varied in our time, but still, it in some way, it's still useful, so we can use it. Like, that's a normal position, for example. But Toda was more radical in some way, so they want to say something against it. Like, Marxism was completely invalid. It's dangerous. But it's uh, the problematic itself ended because of the collapse of the Soviet Union and the end of the Cold War. Um, maybe that could be an answer, or maybe no. <laughs> That's my answer, sorry. Okay. Um, thank you. And are there some other, other questions or comments people would like to make? Anyone in the Zoom session, um, just raise your digital hand. Uh, do you want to reply to that, Raj? Yeah, please. Um, so you mentioned that Toda, there's Marx did not manage to get out of the framework of modernity. So what do you find modernity? Oh, so basically it's, um, um, basically in, for example, in this, in his text, uh, it's about labor and production. So the modernity is um, based on, um, it's a bit vague, <laughs> but basically it's about, like modernity is connected to production, for example, we have to produce. Our labor is um, the source of society or uh, this kind of stuff. and. That is in industrialism in some way, and the statism. So our labor or our industry should be um, developed under the uh, some kind of state. We cannot go out from the state. And the last is a totalitarian way of thinking. So we need some total, total. We, we in some way we presuppose some totality. We like this kind of stuff is probably identified as uh, modernity or modern problematic. So they like uh, they like he led uh, Foucault, and uh, like he says something like the mad or the poor are excluded from this society. Uh, it's because modern modernity itself doesn't um, allow these kind of people, um, for example. But probably that kind of reading of Foucault is probably a bit problematic, maybe. <laughs> but OK, I think we have time for maybe one more question. If someone has um, anything else to, to ask. Anyone in the Zoom? Raise your hand. No. Okay. If if not, then uh, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. If not, then let's give our speaker a round of applause. Thank you.